I think comedy is a very serious matter too. And irony is a very powerful tool if you can find the right way to use it. I think generally climate change is a very difficult subject for the novel. Once you start to moralize, you run the risk, and it's very tempting. Um, but once you start to moralize, you run the risk of your novel losing its energy, lo losing its life. So I decided to make the tale not entirely comic. I mean, there are plenty of serious stretches of this novel. But to give it a, a, a tone that had a, an element of satire in it for this reason. I changed my mind about certain issues, but generally uh, it seemed to me that roughly three quarters of the mainstream of, of science is pointing us towards the fact that we are causing climate change with our industrial civilization. And uh, on the issues of what I did change my mind on, I, by the end uh, I thought that the problem is now so pressing and so severe that I think the whole environmental movement needs to think again about nuclear energy. Um, I think we do need to get through the next 30 or 40 years. We, we don't have enough wind or solar to, to keep the, the lights on in Rome on a cold, windless day in February. You know, it, there, there just isn't the energy to do it. So until those technologies are more refined and more efficient, until we have solar panels that can work at much greater levels of efficiency, uh, I think we're going, and, we, and if we want to stop burning fossil fuels, then we're going to have to have a period, I think, of maybe a 30 or 40, one generation of nuclear power. The interesting alternatives to nuclear are safer nuclear, maybe using thorium, maybe using other, other things other, apart from uranium-235. We lack the research. I mean, ever since Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, the, the whole world has gone into reverse, except for the French, of course. Um, there are problems of cost, of security, uh, of um, pollution, of radioactivity and decommissioning. I know all those problems are there, but taken against the background of climate change and the uh, effect it's already having on lives, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, I think we have to take this seriously. And it's interesting, actually, what I found is any environmentalist over a certain age, let's say 50, has come round to this view. I mean, many senior environmentalists have. Uh, so it's sort of generational, I think. I think it's a risk for all countries, believe me. Uh, well, that's just a matter of governance and transparency and, uh, and so on, and, and that seems to me a separate matter, but uh, we all need to get a grip on that. In Saturday, he was a neurosurgeon, not, not a neuroscientist. So, very, very different. You know, he's not actually a scientist. He's a doctor, and the doctors are in a kind of curious uh, in-between world, somewhere between chefs <laughs> and scientists. You know. uh, well, I don't think I'm interested in science at all. I, what I'm interested in is the world, and uh, I'm curious. And the best uh, means of uh, sating my curiosity uh, is to, about the physical world at least, uh, is to go to science. Uh, it's one of the few, few human thought systems that constantly corrects itself, that's skeptical about itself, that puts its papers up for peer review, that knocks down ideas as soon as they don't work. If only religions were like that. <laughs> Well, I think there's a, there is a, a human mystery about Italy. Uh, whenever I'm in Britain or, or, or abroad somewhere else and I read about Italy, it is one series of political crises after another. Whenever I come to Italy, I find the level of well-being 
extremely high. And uh, if ever I was to write a novel about it, it would be to investigate this mystery. How do you stay so happy? Well, I think maybe having probably the best cuisine on the planet is very important. And can this inspire a new novel of Ian McEwan? Well, I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> Otherwise, my, my publisher will be after me saying, when's my Italy novel finished? <laughs>